you and and those of you who are at all in touch with the art world in Singapore will know the name Russell Wong, celebrity photographer, uh, arguably Singapore's most famous photographer. Uh, the Asian Civilization Museum has brought back an expanded expanded Russell Wong uh, Kyoto exhibition uh, that is now uh, going on. We're so happy to have Russell. I know Neil, a good friend of yours, joining us now. Russell Wong is uh, with us on the show. Hi, Russell. Good morning, Russell Wong. How are you doing today? And thanks for joining us is. on Money FM. It's nice to see you again, Neil. Thank are you. you someplace dark? Are you someplace dark, Russell, or just using yeah, a, I'm, a very I'm, stylish I'm, background? <laughs> Look, I'm a photographer, so we got to get the stylish background. So. <laughs> is, that, is that one of it's your fall, pictures? I hope? It's fall in Kyoto. It's fall, it's fall time in Kyoto, <laughs> okay. but uh, Kyoto moved to Singapore. <laughs> Russell, uh, you know why? Why Kyoto? Obviously, yeah, I lived in Japan for many years. Been to Kyoto. Wow. It's it's okay. amazing. But why this show? Why Kyoto? Um, Kyoto, because uh, you know, I mean, I was involved with in the the movie Members of a Geisha and did the publicity for it. And somehow, I didn't I didn't feel the the, the book did it justice or, or told hmm. told the complete truth. So it 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 just kind of opened up some doors. And and I wanted I knew there was a real story to be told, a more authentic story. So. I went looking around for the story and 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 to speak directly to the players, the actual actual players, who are the geishas and the Michaels and and the the ladies that, that own the tea houses, and and they had obviously a very authentic story that I felt that I had to tell for them, you know, because they don't have PR company, right? So to me, it was more shooting the truth, you know. That's how I looked at it. Well, that's that's fascinating. Before we get into the exhibition in more detail, yeah. what was it you felt that the movie was missing that you hoped to? capture with your lens um it was not just missing i mean the whole narrative and 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 also even the kimonos weren't really authentic and i mean it's hollywood's take on asia as usual so it's like let's let's just paint them with a broad brush because it's it's somewhere in asia and it's one big country you know so that that part of it i mean i never agreed to and they have done it to so many movies and i, I know it's not a documentary i know it's supposed to be uh, I mean, a half fictitious whatever novel, but they kind of sold it as a, a as a real thing, you know, from the book and um, from Miniko Miniko Iwasaki, the original geisha that spoke to the writer, um, and actually the writer was sued by the geisha and and they they had an out of court settlement. Mm. Uh, so I, I you know so it was not just missing it was parts were made up obviously and even visually visually it was not authentic. You know, and all my Japanese friends, yeah. you can ask all the people in Kyoto, you know, I mean, the exact words were, we think it's a joke. That's the exact words to me when I spoke to them. Where did you, wow. where did you pick up, Russell, with your um, uh, wanting to make this a more authentic representation? What specifically did you focus on? What, what caught your eye as a, as a professional photographer? You know, I mean, it's, you know, if you've gone, to, you know, you've been to Kyoto, I'm sure you've been, um, it's, it's just mm. one of those places that you can't, ha you can't shoot a bad shot. So it made my life really easy, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's there for you to capture. You just show up and you will get a nice, beautiful scene, you know, because that's how the, the whole city is laid out. Um, yeah. So with that as a backdrop and with uh, um, the, the Geiko or Geisha, we call them, uh, Geiko, uh, it's a mm -hmm. Kyoto language for Geisha, um, and Maiko, the apprentice, it's just... Mm -hmm. You know that that that's it's it's very theatrical. You know, and and I I shoot on a lot of movie sets. Um, I shoot a lot of landscapes. You know, and it's so beautiful the landscapes. And there's a narrative, and there's fashion. And I was a fashion photographer, so it kind of encapsulated everything I've done oh, about twenty over years, all in this one project, which was actually, you know, it was quite amazing for me. I would use different parts of my brain to shoot different subjects. You know, um, might be a kimono for fashion from a fashion point of view, it might be a narrative, what's going on in the room. So that's from my movie training, shooting a movie mm. sets. Um, and, and so the different aspects to me, you know, it was just so attractive to me that I could use every single little cell in my brain that I was trained to do th these past decades. Yeah. Well, you clearly nice. captured something that, you know, captured the public's imagination because after six months showcase of your exhibition yeah. at the Asian Civilizations Museum, through popular demand, Russell, popular demand, it's coming back, a yeah. special exhibition with new uh, new prints, new editions, 37, I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, yeah. 37 never previously seen prints. Yeah, what are your uh, particular personal favorites, I was going to say? 
I mean, it's just the, uh, you know, if you look at the show, uh, the, 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 the expansion, you know, I call it the expansion. I mean, we added another 37, 38 prints to the original show of about 40 prints. So now it brings the total up to nearly 40 with, with the new videos, you know, not to, 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 to uh, just to mention it. Um, the heart and crux of this second part is I actually shoot how a geisha or a geiko gets ready in a room that you don't get to see, that a normal person does not get to see. But I was privy to being in the bedroom with these two girls and how they are dressed up and how the makeup is, is put on, which they actually they don't like visitors to see because they still want to keep the yeah. myth and that whole fantasy, right? You only see them all fully done up. So, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to be let in and, you know, they trusted me and, and then there it was, you know, um, that, what you call that it. That is such a I, rare, rare uh, opportunity because, as you say, they, they like to keep the veil. Uh, exactly. Everything I learned from six years exactly. of living uh, in, in Japan, they like to keep that veil there and they don't, they don't, you know, taking that down is not something that they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, so you're you know, that's the Japanese lucky. custom, right? I mean, even the, yeah. even the machia, the, the houses, the ochayas, you can't look in. Right? It's just a right. big screen there. So everything yeah. is so like covered and there are different layers to it. And I was so happy to be able to go into that one, that, that bottom layer. Right. Russell, how hard is it as a foreigner to um, <laughs> to be able to peel that back? Because look, I knew you, that, know, you can I knew spend that a lot. <laughs> well, you know, look, yeah. it's the honest, it's an honest question, especially when it comes to yeah. Japan, especially no, no. when it comes to something okay. as, as historic I, as geisha yes. culture. How, 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 if, how do you, if you peel you, that yeah. back as a foreigner? And show you know it? something? It's like Contrary to what people think, if you look at all, if you look at all the the more global, the more uh, uh, um, media out there of books and movies, it's usually from a foreigner, right? right. A book, a movie, uh, some hard, uh, some tales, some books written. It's usually from yeah. a foreigner. And actually, I think, you know, at least from my experience, that as a foreigner, we are not we are not kind of caged in and we're not restricted with that Japanese society hierarchy. So mm -hmm. we're like, okay, well, I'm the Gaijin, you know, I'm like the, you know, the, the innocent foreigner and, and I don't know nothing about your culture and I just want you to let me in. And I'm not like, uh, what do I say? I'm not restricted with the hierarchy because when the Japanese person walks in, right off the bat, he's in already slotted in that hierarchy. And you know how it right. is. They got to act a certain way. You can't ask certain questions. I was in there just asking for the world. I want to get into the bedroom. I want to shoot that. I want to, I mean, just without, you know, even thinking. And hmm. funnily enough, it's kind of dichotomy. They don't want to let you in, but they want to let you in because they're proud of their culture. So hmm. I went in through that, that avenue where, where they were so happy that I was going to tell a story for them about what they do. You and know, just look what you've achieved, yeah. Russell. I mean, for those who can, do do log on to Facebook Live. We're showing one or two of Russell's images now. I mean, the yeah, one we've got perfect. now, this beautiful profile shot. Yes, How did you, I mean... Yeah, Gega, I mean, explain a little yeah. bit about this photo for those who can't see it, but also okay. how did you achieve such intimacy, such trust with your yeah. profile, with your portrait? Well, um, you know, this was actually a tea ceremony that I was invited to, and this particular Gekko, okay, we call them Gekkos in, in Kyoto and Acacias. By that time, I've known, I, I knew her for about three years. So we were in the tea house, and she was actually waiting for the water to boil to make me tea. So I was here on my knees, like everyone on a tatami mat, you know, and just doing that <laughs> the whole close to yoga pose and not being able to walk. Feel, like feeling the pins and needles in your lower feeling legs. You know how that is. Right? You can't get up. You know, and she was laughing at me because she knew I was used to it. You know, I was down yeah. for two hours and she sits there ready, just waiting for the water to boil. And, and being a portraitist, I always wanted to get a portrait feel to it, which means like it's as if I have control over it. Because all mm. these pictures you see here, I don't have control over that. I was just waiting for the moment. And that was the biggest, 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 um, it was, you know, it was, a, it was the biggest difference of what I do because I, you know, I'm a portrait photographer. I tell the girl or the guy what to do, the movie people what to do, and I have full control over it, you know. So this was different for me because I had to wait up on the, on the moment. Fantastic. Wow. And this is oh, why, this I is mean, gorgeous. again. If you can get on the Facebook Live yeah. while Russell is live with us, please do. Yeah. Money FM Facebook Live. And just look at this magnificent photo. Tell us about this one, Russell. This is a gold pavilion. And this gold pavilion is just on a UNICEF list. And it's one of the most beautiful pavilions in Japan. It's all gold leaf. And I was so lucky to get, um, you know, like a snow scene waiting after waiting for 13 years. 
because they told me they were gonna wait for the, uh, like they were gonna snow on a Friday, and then after that was kind of uh, what do I say? It was kind of uh, snowing, and 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 I found out literally five days before that it was snowing. Sorry guys, they're filming my place. <laughs> <laughs> the parallel Welcome to Singapore. Right <laughs> exactly, the dengue is a public. No, anyway, so I waited 12 years for the scene. And I, I heard on a Monday that it was going to snow. I flew in. I'm sorry, I heard on a Monday that it was going to snow on Friday. I flew in on Thursday night at 9 p.m. And it took a flight there and the snow happened at, at 5 in the morning. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, this is this is like you know, it's it doesn't hardly you know it hardly snows in Kyoto, especially on, on a heavy storm where you want the roofs kind of, you know, packed with snow. It usually snows if it even does, for like just an hour, and then you don't really see the you know snow at all because yeah. it melts because it's such a low lying city. Yeah, it's it's a truly glorious shot, and I think we've got one more to to show you one of your personal favorites. I yeah. mean, this is a magnificent <laughs> snapshot of just street life. I mean, again, exactly. Facebook Live, Money FM page. Have a look if you can. Tell us about this one, Russell. And this also, so, I must add, all three of these are at your exhibition, correct? Yes, correct. So this is a Michael or the Apprentice, and she's Apprentice for four years, and and she ended up being the top geisha in Kyoto of all time, being the seventh consecutive top earner. Uh, and I was lucky enough to get her, and we spent time, and I was at the graduation. So this is the scene you see, you know, that I was privy to, because I was part of her entourage, so I didn't have to like crack with 50 photographers uh, uh, trying to chase her down. So I was, you know, I mean, this is coming out from the very iconic uh, Ichiriki uh, tea house. Um, and, uh, you know, I was just waiting for her and she came right out with all the 50 photographers throngs of it. And it was raining at the same time. Um, I just wanted to kind of show what it is like in this day and age for these, uh, for these women. Nice. We're talking with Russell Wong, of course, celebrity photographer, Singapore's most famous photographer. The uh, Asian Civilizations Museum uh, has the expanded Russell Wong in Kyoto exhibition on right now. It started in November. It's going on through the 10th of April, uh, some 37 never before uh, seen prints in public uh, about life in Kyoto and, and all the magic uh, that it uh, comes around. H have you uh, recently, have you walked through the exhibition again, Russell? And, and if you have, what comes, to, what comes to mind when you walk through looking at your own work? I guess it's kind you of know, like Googling yourself, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's, 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 very, <laughs> it's very surreal. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I still can't believe that it took me 12, 13 years to shoot this. You know, it's yeah. like, I was this fly on the wall you know and all the shots are and I, I don't do this type of photography usually this is more documentary style and i don't really shoot news or you know documentary type photography so, so it was a challenge for me and it was it was nice to see the whole body of work that's why i was quite excited to to have the uh the extension and and to have the extra 38 40 prints you know so it told a more comprehensive story um, how you you would feel like you would be there like all my japanese friends felt that they were in kyoto experiencing this with me because nice. I was just flying the wall, you know, in, in the tea house. And we've got lots of comments coming through. Uh, CF Tan says, had the privilege to catch Russell's work at ACM during the year end. Absolutely loved it. Two very good questions, uh, Russell. We'll maybe finish on these, I think. Uh, LL okay. Tan asks, um, is digital manipulation required to enhance the photos? We'll, we'll go with that first. Not when you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yeah, no filter, it's, it's right? Loaded, it's a it's a loaded question, but you know, That's, I did. I, yeah, I grew up in the film era. You can yeah. you, you can manipulate all your life, right? Plus, I think right. manipulating, especially for documentary, it <laughs> just wipes out the credibility. It's not just yeah. about manipulating, because you don't know what 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 what's real in front of you. So if you mm -hmm. manipulate and you go shoot some wall, is it manipulated? I mean, you know. It's a credibility issue for me, especially yeah. with documentary photography. And there's yeah. kind of another loaded question here from Stanley asking, <laughs> Russell, what are the... Interesting question, though, I have to say. Yeah. Russell, what are the Japanese photographers? What do the Japanese photographers say about your work? I haven't really spoken to them personally, uh, but, but the Japanese people in general from Kyoto that have seen the work, they, they, just, can't, they this just could not figure out, is this guy a foreigner? But then again, he can't be a foreigner because he's inside the tea house and he's getting all the special scenes. So maybe he's a Japanese guy. But then again, it's 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 composed not like a Japanese guy. So you know they they, they kind of mixed up on it, which is good for me. 
because the access I got was something that even a Japanese phot photographer would have a problem doing. But my eye, of course, being from Singapore and being trained abroad and traveling globally, I have more a more global eye and a more global approach to the visual. So that kind of throws them off, you know. So I'm, I'm yeah. through my eyes, they know that this is not a Japanese photographer because a Japanese photographer will not shoot it this way. You know, we'll yeah. not crop it this way. We'll not focus on the certain part this way. Hmm. Yeah. Russell, I'd like to ask you just one last general question to finish off our time today. And yeah. Look, no one's ever going to compete with you on, on the level that you're at uh, that's <laughs> listening a, to this show. It's not a I competition, don't think. man. Uh, but <laughs> well, no, but you know, you're, you're a professional. You've spent your life and your career yeah. and your eye is trained. And my, my question goes to, you know, now that we are all you know, using our devices yep. as uh, as uh, taking pictures of our family, our friends, scenes we see when we're on holiday or around town or whatever, and of course posting them. What what what's one or two things that uh, a piece of advice that you can give people when they are trying to decide what they should focus on when they're going to take a picture? I, I know it's I know it's a really tough thing to to, yeah. to narrow down to one or two sentences, but how how should people approach thinking about how they're going to shoot something you know if you need to think if you need to think that then that then it, it, you're just overthinking it and i think you just got to feel it i think the most important thing is whatever moves you like art right A certain art move you and and if you feel this part of the room or this part of the scene is interesting shoot it because you know something that's your perspective and that kind mm -hmm. of speaks to you and maybe it doesn't speak to someone else you know, so art is about perspective, and 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 uh, you know, and I think that's that's a whole part of it. I might see the, see this subject this way. You might see it a different way. So I think whatever moves you, you're passionate about, capture that, because that's yours, nice. and that's only your perspective that that maybe, you know, you can kind of share it with someone. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks, well. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, my friend. Your exhibition Thanks. has been extended, I believe, until 10th of April. And I just want to add this part. The 30, tell me if I'm wrong, Russell, but the 37 new prints, you are personally donating to the museum afterwards to thank them for their support. Is that correct? Yes, actually, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm donating uh, pretty much, you know, I'm donating pretty much a whole show, yeah, to, to the museum. Just to have it as an archive and, and a document. Wonderful. Wow. Thank you very much for that, Russell. It's a, great, it's a great, great, generous effort. So get down, folks. The Asian Civilization Museum, been extended through popular demand. Thank you very much for joining us today, Russell Wong. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Russell. Yep. See you soon. Wow. Traffic. I, I, I... Oh, we're on to the traffic. Dan caught me out there. Okay, on the traffic, we've got an accident on the BKE towards the PAE before the PIE exit avoid lane 2. Roadworks on Upper Changi Road towards the city after Bedok Road avoid the right lane. Still roadworks on the CTE towards the SLE at the Braddle Road exit and more roadworks on the ECP towards the city after the Still Road South exit avoid lane 4. That's your traffic update. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel is right here Money FM 89.3. If you see anything on the roads that we might have missed, you can share it with us via SMS or WhatsApp at 8855-0893. But please send the message through only when you are safely parked. You're cruising through your weekend on Money FM 89.3.